my name is uh, David Kraus, and this is my final presentation on what is art and the movements and art forms of it. Uh, so what I did is I went to the Seattle Art Museum uh, in downtown Seattle, and I decided to go look at art there, uh, talk to people around there, and you know just trying to get a general uh, more grasp of you know what all the arts are their content their meaning their form uh, things like that and I brought uh, my significant other with me and she you know gave her opinion of the art too so I was able to kind of you know get another person's point of view of the art and uh, yeah so without further ado <laughs> All right, so the first uh, thing that I think that makes kind of art, so there's a lot of like, you know, obviously art movements and forms and techniques that make art. So I try to choose some uh, movements uh, and coincide with some different art forms as well to uh, kind of explain what I think art is and what makes art. So this first uh, piece of art is street art. And uh, the two up there you can see is uh, by uh, Banksy so most people probably know Banksy we had some readings on Banksy so uh, the one on the right is actually called uh, Girl with Balloon and uh, so it was actually created in 2002 it's medium is a spray paint on wall uh, medium is just kind of like what material was used to make it so this is a uh, part of the street art movement obviously um, and street art I think is a, is more modern now you know, it didn't really come uh, into fruition until like the early 2000s, I would say. Uh, but a lot of times it's, you know, people really see street art as, you know, vandalism or graffiti. And it's covered up a lot of times uh, right away, either by the company that owns the building or the city, depending on if it's public street. And uh, it's kind of a big deal too now because uh, if you walk around downtown Seattle, you'll see actual murals of street art now. So it actually designs some, some of the uh, buildings on the side. Uh, so there's some famous street artists, Bansky, Shepard Fairley. Shepard Fairley actually did uh, the Obama Hope posters. We read a little bit about that too. Uh, Vader, he does a lot of like 8-bit type style art. Uh, and then cultural aspects behind there. Obviously, there's political activism, humor, and there's some murals. So, uh, like the political political activism, uh, we read a little bit about like the Arab uh, spring art. Uh, so, you know, they often use art to uh, go against whatever you know the regime that's uh, oppressing them. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So, and then the artists usually get uh, punished for those actions and now they're able to but you know the art continues to keep growing even though they're getting punished and it helps further build resistance uh, there's some humor ones so there's uh, also you guys probably seen them too there'll be like uh, something on the floor that looks three-dimensional might looks like you might fall through a hole you know so there's stuff like that and then of course there's murals nowadays and here's one of the murals that you guys might see it's a Soto track so uh, probably Seattle's most famous art as well. It's, uh, so if you get on the uh, the uh, light rail from SeaTac to go to Seattle, there's uh, that two mile stretch uh, of just the murals that are painted on the side. So it's another you know example of street art how it's transformed into this much bigger art form. As you see, it took 50 different artists all over across the world to create this. Uh, two mile stretch and you know it's something that people see every day when they go to work or visit the city they see these uh, like really beautiful pieces on the side and uh, to go back to some of the street art uh, so the left is uh, Banksy, uh, Banksy's uh, interpretation of the government of Brit uh, Britain spying on their people so there's a big thing going on back then and then the uh, piece on the right is Girl with a Balloon it was made in 2002 uh, so this shows a girl 
you know, just reaching for a balloon that's just flown away. And there's a uh, writing on the side that says there's always hope. And uh, he said that he uh, kind of has the meaning of the balloon being hope, love, innocence, and childhood and self-conscious. But there's still always hope to uh, get your goals and dreams, even though it just feels like it's just out of grasp. So he does a lot of powerful uh, street art like this. That uh, means a lot to people. Uh, so the next movement that I chose is uh, surrealism art. And uh, surrealism is basically art that takes like everyday objects and kind of perceives them as illogical. And uh, it basically allows people to create art using implausible reasoning, but still create something that can be interpreted in different many ways and elicit a response from the observer. And uh, so these uh, examples are that of surrealism. Uh, so you guys know Frida Kahlo, she did the broken column right here and the one on the left is called Man and Mouse by Katharina Frisch. Uh, it's a sculpture made of polyester resin and so when we this the one on the left is from the Seattle Art Museum and the one from the right is from our reading uh, so the one on the left uh, you first walk in this thing's like 94 inches uh, tall and uh, so when I was talking to the person about it the lady that created this, she uh, designed all of her artwork based on uh, the Soviet wall, or not the, sorry, the Berlin wall collapse. So when I first saw this, I kind of thought of a uh, sleep paralysis and uh, something like that, like the mouse was the sleep paralysis, you know, and you're trying to wake up but you can't because the uh, man laying on the bed he's in all white too so he looks you know it kind of gives you that peaceful sense too and the black mouse is the more sinister feeling maybe so that's kind of what I thought about and then when I learned about it was uh, based on uh, the Berlin Wall collapse and like the Soviet Union's pressure I kind of thought like uh, maybe that she created this to kind of show um, like the pressure the Soviet Union had on top of like Germany and every everything uh, you know they're trying to go their peaceful lives you know but they have this looming presence over them and I believe she might have maybe depicted that using the uh, mouse so, I mean, as you can tell, there's also different forms and uh, people do lots of paintings that are just kind of crazy out there. Like, the, you see there's clocks on the ground just trying to figure out what they could possibly mean. Frida Kahlo, you already know, she did, uh, like, her uh, painting based on all the pain and everything she had. So she, you know, got in an accident, had all these blood transfusions, spinal taps, and metal corsets around her body. So she tried to paint what it felt like to her. So it's like a self surrealism post portrait, basically, of herself. Uh, next is I did abstract art. Um, it can also a lot of uh, people kind of get this uh, mixed up with surrealism and everything, but abstract art's a little different than that. Uh, so the one on the left is an untitled actually art piece. But it's got by a guy named uh, Anselm Kiefer, and the one on the right is called Music, uh, Blue and Pink Number One. It's by Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, sorry, I lost my track, train of thought. But anyways, uh, so the abstract art's kind of just this basically can be anything what in the authors just or the artist is trying to help you tr realize you know that like it doesn't have to mean anything but it could still mean something to you or the artist uh, doesn't 
uh, represent anything in like you know reality or anything like that. So uh, so this right here is composition seven on the side, uh, the music series which I showed, and some untitled works like that. So this uh, abstract art on the right, the music uh, blue and pink number one. So she actually designed this trying to visualize what uh, music sounded like, but on a painting. So she tried to give it some type of like a warmth feeling, but keep it more natural and uh, human nature in a way. And like to me, when I first saw it, I actually thought of an ear. So it kind of made sense to me. Uh, other people saw clouds and a... Uh, and a lake. The one on the left is, uh, he's actually a controversial artist. He does a lot of uh, uh, Nazi era paintings. So this one is uh, based on the Holocaust and it does kind of remind me of like a prison and you know just kind of makes you think of like what kind of horrors and tragedies happen there. Uh, the next one is Baroque art. Uh, so basically Baroque art is like a high tier consideration of what art is and uh, it's kind of like it's you know it's like socially constructed art basically so it's dominated by religious uh, sects mainly Christianity uh, Greek ancient Rome all those uh, dominate the Baroque art so we say it's socially constructed because uh, the way they consider themselves is as it's being fine art, you know, it's above all others, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they do, it's all under the category of architectural, there's music, dance, performances, paintings, but the main ones you see are the architectural, like the one on the right, where this is inside of a church, uh, things like that, and then all the old school paintings like these um, they're just considered more top tier fine art uh, even though it's just all socially viewed that way the one on the right is actually uh, from the Seattle Art Museum it's called Drunken Salinas by Giuseppe de Ribera uh, this was created back in 1626 it's oil on canvas so it's a painting um, uh, the thing I found about interesting about this one was uh, it stood out from the others because this uh, section in there was you know based on Christianity and a lot of their art was uh, based on events in the Bible and this one obviously was not so it made me it really stood out uh, he was actually known for painting humorous paintings so this is him mocking uh, Roman culture uh, shows uh, Pan filling up Salinas, which is his son's bottle, or uh, not bottle, his cup full of wine. And uh, you see that he's like, uh, you know, his figure isn't uh, stoic and powerful like the Romans always represent themselves in their paintings and pet, uh, uh, how they do their paintings and sculptures. And it just kind of makes me think of, you know, how people perceive other cultures. So he's mocking, you know, Roman culture, something that's different from his. And it's kind of like how we do today where, you know, we're still human beings and it's centuries later and we're still, you know, thinking differently of other cultures and mocking other cultures. And, you know, and it's important to see these types of art pieces still through time that do that. So the uh, last one I did was uh, pop art. So pop art is started kind of happening in like the 40s and 50s and 60s started becoming more popular back then. Uh, you I mean you probably recognize names like Andy Warhol. Uh, he created the the Campbell soup stuff. So the one right here. Basically, they take uh, mundane everyday items and like food, clothes, comic books, and they use them as advertisements. And uh, the big challenge of pop art, pop art is making these items appealing. So, uh, so actually this, so these, which this is one of the famous paintings, is the tomato soup, or Campbell's soup uh, ads. This one's just the tomato soup one. He made 32 
different one. This was by Andy Warhol. He made them in 1962. Uh, he actually, when they first uh, presented these pieces, it was like a failure. No one was, everyone was like, what? What is this? You know, like, what's going on? But eventually it just kind of took off and exploded. And, you know, now you see arts and advertisements when you watch TV and you CGI stuff all that they just you know makes you want the food or makes you want the clothing and uh, you know it's just trying to basically design to attract you to everyday items and uh, I think that's you know important in art because we consume it almost every day whatever we're doing on whether we're on our phones there's an advertisements on our phones there's advertisements on TV advertisements when you can go to movies advertisements when you're walking through the mall or going anywhere advertisements when you're listening to the radio so uh, art's uh, just big in that aspect because it's always just trying to get your attention but anyways I you know picked out five of uh, movements that I thought were important to art and I think there are uh, lots of other there's definitely more movements to art that are also really important and uh but I mean, we can go on all day discussing those movements. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the art. And I uh, hope you understand uh, some of the movements better if you didn't know about them. And uh, thank you for stopping by and listening.